okay so after pinna and external auditory canal we have tympanic membrane as a next topic in the anatomy of the external ear tympanic membrane is a thin translucent see-through membrane certain structures can be seen through that tympanic membrane of the middle ear like certain clothes can allow some structures to be seen and this also need expertise like some boys can effectively point out that structure and some needs assistance but anyway so it's a it's a, it's, it's a see-through membrane and the orientation of tympanic membrane is something like this suppose this is my right tympanic membrane this is the lateral side of the tympanic membrane so tympanic membrane face is laterally forwards and downwards once again so tympanic membrane is facing laterally little bit of forwards and 55 degree downwards due to this orientation of tympanic membrane when the light is thrown the light reflects into the antero inferior quadrant right so any pathology in the middle ear which disturbs the orientation of tympanic membrane will disturb the cone of light also you can just the orientation of tympanic membrane from the cone of light now what all structures you can see through the tympanic membrane the first one is the handle of malleus handle of malleus the lateral process of the malleus right these are the notch of rivenous and the structure attaching from notch of rivenous to the handle of malleus are the malleolar fold the anterior and the posterior malleolar fold right and the structure above that malleolar fold are the pars flaccida the tympanic membrane is lax at this part the rest of the tympanic membrane is the pars tensa and tympanic membrane can be divided into four quadrants then uh, the imaginary line through the handle of malleus and the another imaginary line perpendicular to that through umbo right so this one is antero superior quadrant antero inferior postero superior and the postero inferior quadrant now what are the parts of malleus suppose this is one is the malleus this is the head of the malleus this is the lateral process of the malleus this is the handle of malleus and this one is the anterior process of the malleus this lateral process of the malleus becomes more prominent when tympanic membrane is retracted right suppose this is tympanic membrane over it and if the tympanic membrane goes uh, if it is pulled inwards this lateral process becomes more prominent so this can guide us that the tympanic membrane is retracted so after malleus we have incus right this is the long process of incus this is the lenticular process of the incus this is the stapes suprastructure and this is the foot plate of the stapes you can also see lenticular process of the incus and sometimes incudo stapedial joint which is ball and socket type of synovial joint and sometimes oval window niche and round window niche can be also seen okay so after direction we have now what what color of tympanic membrane will you see the reflex of the tympanic membrane is pearly gray or pearly white and embryologically it is composed of three layers the outer epithelial which which is derived from the ectoderm middle fibrous which is derived from the mesoderm and inner mucosal which is derived from the endoderm the total area of the tympanic membrane is no doubt 90 mm square right but the effective vibratory area is only 55 mm square and normal tympanic membrane is mobile maximally at the periphery now if there is central perforation if there is central perforation how we can define the central perforation that perforation is surrounded all over by tympanic membrane that's the central perforation and it's the safest type of perforation now if that central per perforation is small enough that it can heal by itself that will heal in two layers because the perforation is often closed by squamous epithelium before fibrous element develop the middle fibrous element right develops a little longer than as compared to the epithelium right so epithelium and mucosal will combine without that fibrous layer so healed perforation always has two layers of tympanic membrane and therefore the fibrous layer is absent in the healed perforation now certain signs of tympanic membrane the first one is cartwheel sign that's seen in acute suppurative otitis media where the leash of blood vessels runs in radial direction from the handle of malleus you'll find tympanic membrane as congested tympanic membrane the next one is the flamingo pink sign or schwartz sign in otosclerosis you'll find blue and bulging tympanic membrane in glomus tumors glomus tumors are of two types glomus tympanicum and glomus jugulare 
Sago green appearance that means you'll find vesicles which are filled with serosanguinous and blood filled vesicles in otitis externa hemorrhagica that's caused by mycoplasma it is also called meningitis bullosa of course the retracted tympanic membrane is found in eustachian tube disorder what happens when the eustachian tube is blocked the erosion to the middle ear cavity is also blocked and the remnant air is absorbed by the mucosa of that middle ear which forms a vacuum in the middle ear when and it pulls the tympanic membrane inside this will form the retracted tympanic membrane